We had a rare, warm April day here in Colorado, so it was the perfect opportunity to grab my painting supplies and take the kids to the lake. Are you guys excited? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. While my seven-year-old and five-year-old played with sand, splashed in the water, and collected shells, I got to try out my new Advanced Series and Plein Air Pro watercolor easel kit. I had been eyeing this kit for a while, and I finally bit the bullet and purchased the kit from Amazon for $288.89. This price included taxes and shipping. This is actually less than I paid for my New Wave Yugo Peshad box and tripod because all the parts are sold separately for that one when you purchase the box, the two side panels, and the tripod, so you'll be in for about $350. Now, believe it or not, I've never owned an easel that was specifically designed for watercolor, so I was curious to see if it was worth the cost and also if I'd like it as much or better than my New Wave Yugo Peshad box and tripod. The Plein Air Pro set comes with a sturdy, slick brand tripod, an attachable, heavy-duty plastic palette and shelf with protective cover, a collapsible water container that hangs from the palette, a sponge, a retractable brush holder, and the best part is the large 12 by 15 and 3 quarter inch lightweight metal easel board with a lip that easily attaches to the tripod with a built-in standard camera quick release. Everything fits inside a duffel bag that comes with the set. Although I used my large REI backpack instead for this excursion, I definitely plan on using the duffel bag when I'm not hiking very far. The whole set is no more than 10 pounds, so it's very lightweight, assembly is quick and convenient, and they seem to have thought of everything. This set really has it all. I've never painted outdoors with such a large palette before. I've always used compact pan sets, so this was revolutionary, getting to use my tube paints with the large portable palette. So much mixing space! According to the website, it's made from heavy-duty ABS thermoformed material, so it doesn't feel flimsy at all. It's really sturdy and seems to be able to take quite a bit of weight. Setup only took me about five minutes. It was windy out, so I was a little worried that the easel might tip in the wind, especially since the easel is so wide, but it was really sturdy and didn't budge the whole day, even when some of the big gusts blew my hat off. For my paper, I used my handmade Arches Paper Watercolor Journal by Artsy Rosie. You can check out this video for my complete review about this sketchbook. I used the rubber bands to hold down the pages and bull clips attached at the top of the easel to secure the book and hold it open. This worked so well. You could also easily tape single sheets of watercolor paper to this easel, and because the board is adjustable, you can position it in either portrait or landscape. And if you're not comfortable working upright, you can tilt the board as flat as you want. With my easel all set up, I decided to paint the mountains and shoreline in front of me. I always start with a sketch. It took me a couple of tries to get the perspective right with that steep sandy bank on my left. At first I tried starting with the sandbank, but it just wasn't working for me. I had to erase and start over. And once I blocked in the distant mountain silhouette, it was a lot easier to correctly sketch the foreground. When painting landscapes, I work background to foreground. I used wet and wet to paint the sky and clouds, a combination of ultramarine and phthalo blue for that sky color. Something I'm always trying to get better at when I'm plein air painting is creating super soft horizon lines for that feeling of atmosphere and depth, but I still have a lot to learn. The air here is really dry too, and with a stiff wind blowing on my painting, it seemed like the paper just dried out so fast. This just requires a lot of wetting and re-wetting to get those softer edges where the trees and mountains blur in the background. The placement of the water container here, by the way, in the center of the palette where it hangs from a hole with a curved edge is such a good design. I can use the edge of the palette to remove excess water from my brush. The container's out of the way while it's still perfectly accessible. And if if for some reason you prefer a different water cup, it can easily and snugly be placed inside the circular opening. I wasn't sure if I'd need the brush holder, but I did end up using it quite a bit, and the lip of the easel worked great for setting down my pencil. There's also a cutout on the right side here where you could hang a rag or an additional water jar, whatever you want. For painting the sand, I discovered that yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of violet created just the perfect color. Once I added the sandbank and some dark details, it really started to look more realistic. I enjoyed myself so much and the kids were entertaining themselves, so I even snuck in a second painting looking the opposite direction. Overall, I am very happy with this easel purchase. I think I'll enjoy using it for many years to come. I do think it is a little less portable than the New Wave Peshad box. It's just wider and longer, so more cumbersome. That makes it difficult to hike with or take with me if I'm using air travel. Both setups could be used for other art media like pastel, oils, acrylic, or drawing. 
But for local watercolor plein air painting, this N Plein Air Pro kit really is the perfect setup. I highly recommend. There's an Amazon link in the description below to this easel kit, so you can check that out. And as an added perk, just for members of my online school, I've negotiated a special discount code through the N Plein Air Pro website. So if you're a member, you can log in now and check that out. Let me know your comments, questions, and thoughts below. I love hearing from you guys, and please let me know if you'd like to see more plein air painting videos like this one. I'll see you soon.